Welcome to the Happy Mindset, episode 132. Today's episode is called Dogma. So today I am going to talk about dogma primarily as a creative person. How do you face dogma? Dogma both from yourself and also from the culture, from organizations around you as well. How do you go about actually navigating all this stuff? Because it's a big thing as a creative person because you can't really be a creative person if you're dogmatic in your approach. Not from my point of view, you can be anyway. So I suppose the essence of all this is that when it comes to dogma, I guess I'll give you my perspective on, on how I navigate dogma. First of all, I look at my own belief system. I look at my own way of looking at the world. I pay attention to my body. I pay attention to the emotion. So a signal to me if I'm being dogmatic about something is that if I'm very fixed on one idea being the ultimate solution, it's ideological in its nature as well when I think about it. So that would also manifest in a very, very strong emotion to that belief. It's very, very something that like there's a lot of emotion to it. It's very rigid. There's no budging on it. That for me is a signal within myself that that's something I need to take a look at. And I'll do that through writing. And I'll do that through a podcast as well. I learn some stuff as well from talking to other people, talking things out myself. It brings this stuff out in, into the open. Because a lot of what you want to do as well is separate the idea from you, the individual person. Because what I've noticed is that if I'm very dogmatic in something, it, it feels like a part of me. It feels like a part of my personality, a part of my identity. So for me, in my understanding of what I want to do with my life, when it comes to self-awareness, when it comes to living a bit more free in your mind, I don't want to have things like that that are very dogmatic and feel very rigid in me. So I'll take a closer look at that through writing, through journaling, through the podcast. And then from that, it loosens the emotion and that is what gives you your mind. It opens it up to different ways of looking at the same thing. This will also help you with relating to other people. So if you're being dogmatic, chances are you'll come in conflict with people who are also dogmatic. And this is where it gets very tricky with the dogma, is that it's just going to go at loggerheads because there's dogma mixed in there. So whatever you say or whatever they say won't convince you of a dogmatic belief. The only time I've ever been convinced of letting something go will be from somebody who is helping me, who's just created a space for me to think through things logically and to even feel through these emotions that are very restrictive in me being able to think through things logically. So that's, well, that's how I think about emotion and logic as well, is that when you start to loosen the emotion, even feel it, logically you can think more clearly about things, think more rationally about things, because you gain new perspectives. Because with the dogma, there is no multiple perspectives in that dogmatic belief. It's just this one belief, no other beliefs are right, because you're coming as well from this right or wrong mindset. So there's a belief in there too, that if I give way on this dogmatic belief that I have that it means I'm wrong and being wrong there can be belief in there too sometimes where being wrong feels like debt to yourself so this has been something I've navigated as well as a self-learner that I had a belief for a long time that being right was the most important thing it was more important than actually finding the truth seeking the truth that wasn't something that consciously I would have decided to do at any point in time it was just something I would have picked up on over time from my interactions with the world that being wrong felt like debt and being right felt, well, it didn't even feel good if I really took a look at it, but it felt better than being wrong. That's that's, that's what I'd say about that. So with dogma, I suppose the first time I came across dogma, I think it was in my early 20s and it would have been, I suppose, what was the most prevalent back then for me would have been religion that I started to see. Like, I have nothing against religion per se. I think there's a lot of great stuff to it, like spirituality-wise. But I think where the dogma comes in, it really stifles the whole thing. And it's very charged emotionally as well. It's one of those subjects that are very, very charged emotionally. So I tend to steer away from there because there's, there's nothing really for me to gain from that. But that's where it became clear to me that there's dogma in the world. It would have been my first, uh, first real realization of this. And the thing is, too, that I didn't even have the word dogma in my awareness when I was going through the tick of my life experience where there was a lot of dogma in my life. Because dogma, again, has been picked up by things outside of you early on in your life that 
it actually feels like your beliefs a lot of the time. But then when you start taking a closer look, you're like, who actually, where did this belief come from? Did I originate it or did it come from outside of my mind? And that's another thing that will help you with dogma. When you start to realize that a lot of the dogma in there didn't even originate in your own mind, that it came from outside of you, that allows you to leave it go. It allows you to leave it go when you start actually seeing that. Because it wasn't something that you actually consciously created in your mind to begin with. So when the religion was in the first thing there, then I just started seeing it play out in all arenas of life. Everywhere there's dogmatic thinking. So the way I think about dogmatic thinking is just simply if somebody's very, very rigid, and this is definitely the answer, they're not open and receptive to hearing anything else. That's dogma for me there. That's a, it's, a, it's a style of thinking. So as a polymath, my style of thinking would be multiple, multiple taking on multiple perspectives. That's what works for me. Um, I've always, I've always liked that. I've always liked exploring different things, keeping my mind open. Even when it comes to, this is something about me as well. When it comes to studying a new field, I don't have a dogmatic approach. I don't really cling to beliefs. What I look at is thought patterns, ways of perceiving things. I don't look for anything in a new field where I'm like looking unconsciously for a belief to cling on to. Because I don't, because I've had enough experiences in my life where I realized that anytime you attach yourself to an ideology, a belief, an idea, it's not a great thing to do. Because when you even look at the world today, the most destructive people are like ideologues, dogmatic people. They're, they don't accept other people who have different beliefs and stuff like that. It's very tribalism mentality. And that's something that as people, we want to see progression. I think you see that all throughout history is that as we evolve, there's less ideologies, less dogma. I think it creates more opportunities for peace. So then when I, I, when I, can, when I think of dogma, this has been something that's been a journey. It's been a process for me to evolve with this. Even getting to a stage where I can speak a little bit about dogma on a podcast is huge progress for me because, again, I would be very, very fearful of saying anything because of fear of getting pushback or people misinterpreting what I'm saying or having to fight myself and defend myself. What I've learned over the years, though, when it comes to dogma is that not to fight back. Use that principle. I think it's an Aikido principle. Let them... If they're coming at you with energy, let them let, let it collapse on itself by not resisting. That's something that's easier said than done. So it's a practice. It's a it's a way of living. It's a it's something you develop in yourself. It's something that I wanted to develop myself as well. Because if you are pushing back on something that there's going to be no leeway there, it's it's just creating conflict there. I don't really want to be involved with that. I'd rather just speak about things and progress with life. I don't really want people in my life who are who are like that, so I don't go out of my way to actually interact with them. One thing that ke- that I kept in mind that helped me a while back would have been this idea. It's actually it's a it's a it's a weird image. Actually, it's a, it sounds very harsh, but it's don't feed pearls to swine. I think it's a, it's from the Bible. I think it's a very uh, it sounds like a very harsh thing to say, very harsh image, but it keeps I keep that in my mind. I've kept it in my mind over time is that when you meet somebody who you know from interacting with them, there's going to be no leeway here on this. There's going to be no progression. You're just going to end up hating each other. I keep that in my mind. And as well, it helps me to be a bit more humble as well, because when you are coming from that mindset of you know best, it can manifest here as well in, in two dogmatic styles of thinking. It's that feeling that you know best and this person is wrong. They're uneducated. And that's uh, straight away, that's a feeling of disrespect. So when it comes to that image, don't feed... Don't feed pearls to swine. I think about it in the sense that I don't have the right answers anyway. And I'm trying to convince somebody who I'm looking at as a swine that I've got the pearls, I got the knowledge. So that whole thing is a is a is something that isn't productive on either side. Because I suppose that's what I have in my mind is that when I'm coming from that preacher mindset, it's me, the person with the pearls, and I seem this person is a swine trying to feed that to them. So I don't want any part of that. So it's uh, I don't want to be the person with the pearls of wisdom. I don't want to be interacting with a person who's not going to receive them. What I want to be in a situation is what somebody is coming, where two people are coming together. 
different perspectives, having a conversation and working things through. It's not always easy because there are differences and stuff like that, but that's a sign of maturity that you can try to at least work through stuff. And uh, so, yeah, you don't get to that with dogmatic styles of thinking. That's what I've realized you know, from being a polymath. And what this does for you as well, it makes you more curious about the world. So when you've got less dogmatic people in your life, because this is your intention here, that you want to take on different perspectives, you don't want to attach yourself to any belief, any thought consciously. You might already have some stuff unconsciously that you're working through, like most of us. But um, at least you're making that intention. So as a result, in the long term, you just won't have a lot of dogmatic people around you because it just you just won't resonate with them. Uh, you wouldn't go out of your way to be around them, or interact with them because it just doesn't feel great and there's actually no progression. It's just a lot of time too with dogmatic thinking. It's just thinking. It's just thoughts. There's no actual real productive action from it other than conflict. So there's no real exploration, no evolution. So it's not something that I want to go down. So as a creative person anyway, what this all does for you, when you're not dogmatic in your style, you've just got more stuff to write. You're always going to be evolving. You're taking on different perspectives. You're looking at something that you're looking at similar things, the same thing maybe in your life in a different perspective and you're writing about it in a different way than you would have had otherwise. So I've just found with as a creative person, when you're not dogmatic in your approach, in a very practical, fundamental level, you've just got more to create with. Because one of the fears of a creative person, a fear I had at the beginning, was I'll run out of material here, I'll just be talking about the same thing over and over again, I'll run out of material, and that's still a fear that's in the back of my mind, that I will talk about the same things over and over again. I think there's an element of, there are important things that you do learn from repetition, so that's not all bad to repeat some of the same stuff over and over again. But you do also want to see an evolution in the content, in your thinking, in the way you're elaborating on things. And I guess I get that from guess, from interacting with new people, from having an open mind, from not clinging to right or wrong answers, being aware when I'm doing that. There's another simple thing as well. Um, came across this years ago. I am... What was it again? In my mind, anyway, I picked it up as like, as I am is like another word for God. Because anything you put after the words I am, you're identifying with. And in an ideal, in a perspective that I want to have is that it's just I am. That you don't put anything after that, so you're not identifying with that. It's just a nice kind of thing to have in your mind. Again, it's, it's not something to go dogmatic with. It's, I suppose this has always been the struggle for me. Is that... When I saw something I didn't like, I would be ve immediately I would go into a dogmatic way of looking at it. I'm like, I never want to be like that. I don't believe in that. I don't like those people. So it's very, very tricky because the thing you don't like, which is dogma, you're using dogma to not like it. So that has been the hardest part to all this. So even with that there, I'm not going around thinking in my own mind as well that, that uh, people who say, anything after I am or stupid or anything like that. It's really just about forgetting other people, forgetting what they believe the world is, forgetting anything that they're believing in, and just coming back to like, what do I actually believe about this? Because there is there is a mix here where there's general stuff in society that you find that like, yeah, that works well. Like we do need group stuff, we need collective stuff that will help us to just help civilization evolve there is sacrifices and trade-offs to be made here between the collective and, and the individual so i'm not naive enough to think that you can have a society where everybody is self-actualized and the world look exactly like it is today maybe it might be better maybe it might be worse i don't know it'll be utopian dystopian kind of point of view there but there is a blend here where i think ultimately then it comes back to the individual to self-express in a way where they where they feel that they're being more conscious i think ultimately that's what we want here is to be more conscious as individuals, create a more conscious collective from doing that. A bit philosophical, I guess, those ideas. But on a practical level, anyway, I just find with not being dogmatic about stuff is that there's more potential to to actually enjoy the process because it's more of an adventure because you're looking at the world each day as I could learn something fundamentally new about the world today or I could learn something slightly new about the world today that I didn't know yesterday that could change everything for me. So there's a sense of wonder and adventure there that 
the way I would look at dogmatic thinking, then it comes it comes down to very kind of stale reality. Not a lot of actual helpful emotions there. Emotions that actually restrict and constrict your actions. And you're judging other people as well. You want them to be in that small box as well. So there's not a lot of great stuff going on there. Um, but just just changing it, just shifting it, shifting it more to an approach of listening as well. That's another thing that has probably helped me, I think, as well, is that. This style of thinking and relating to the world allows me to see that if the more I listen, the more I learn about the world, the more I learn about the world, the more I can create, the more I create, the more I'm actually creating my world. And it doesn't feel as forced. It doesn't feel like I'm imposing my will on anybody. It's, I suppose the word would be, it's like an active way of being passive. Because I would have thought that that was a very passive way of being, but now I'm starting to realize that actually listening and learning and then creating, that's a very active way of being in the world because you are creating the things that you want to see in a way that doesn't feel very forced and very very rigid, very dogmatic. It feels more, there's more of a flow to it, but there's an active nature to it. It's, it's that balance there between flow, letting things happen, allowing things, surrendering, but also actively creating from that. So that's the, the balance there. When you start drifting more away from dogma, I think as well with dogma, the approach is that you need to convince other people of your point of view. You get very dogmatic. It's very dictatorial. Um, and then that's the way you can go down there. It's not a great experience for anybody, I don't think. But um, the other option then is to, to be more be more in flow. I suppose the other thing here is having a backbone. So that's something that I've struggled with because well, that's a little slightly bit of the trade-off here. When you are open to different perspectives all the time, especially at the beginning, I found to myself that I was very quick to go, I'm wrong here, because that that's the start of the process. That when you start to realize that, geez, I've been very dogmatic and very rigid about things for a long part of my life, and now you're starting to really second guess yourself. So you can, for a while, experience a stage of life where you're, you, you don't feel like you've got a backbone in anything because of that you've associated having a backbone with that dogma. I've got no real actual solution to that other than giving it time. You do reach a stage after a while after that. Don't know how long that will take. But you reach a stage where you're like, no, this is, no, that's 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 not right. Um, I, I've, because I, a lot of it's actually down to, you've gone through a few stages already where you've realized, no, that wasn't a good approach. You're not saying to that other person, it's not a good approach for them, but it's not a good approach for me. Uh, I've already discovered that. So I keep moving on. I think that's how you gradually start getting the backbone again after that period of receptivity. But that's it anyway. I hope that makes a bit of sense. That's my thoughts on dogma, how I navigate it as a creative person. Don't get trapped in it because dogma is like quicksand. The more you battle against it, the more you get stuck. So that's why I avoid it. I look at it. I speak about it today. I'm not unhealthily avoiding it. I'm acknowledging it's there. But I'm not fighting against it because I know what fighting does with that. It just keeps you stuck and bound to it, bounded to it for infinity. So that's it. Thanks again for listening. And I will speak to you on the next episode.